In this video, we're going to talk about the properties of summations and products. Things we can use when we're trying to solve problems that involve summations or products. So the first property I'm going to talk about is that of summations. If we have two summations, and we want to add them together, we can do so as long as the bounds are the same. Right? So as long as the bounds on both summations are the same, we can add them together into a new summation with the same bounds. Like this. And this should really make sense because imagine if we were to expand these sequences. So we would have uh, this first one is going to give us A. Uh, now the first term in that sequence is going to be M plus A of M plus 1 plus A of M plus 2 and so on all the way up to A of N. Right? And we're adding this sum to the sum of B sub K, which is going to be B of M. Because again, we start at M and we go to N. B of M plus 1 plus B of M plus 2 plus all the way up to B of N. And now notice I'm adding both of these together, these two sums. I can group them in this sense as well. Right? I don't have to group all the A's with the A's and the B's with the B's. Instead, I can group them in this order. So A of M plus B of N. A of M plus 1 plus B of M plus 1 plus A of M plus 2 plus B of M plus 2 and so on, which is really just how we're writing it here. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense how that works. Let's take a look at our second property. Here, if we multiply a constant by a summation, what do we get? Well, imagine our summation is again just a sum And we're multiplying the whole thing by a constant c. Well, we know from algebra, if we have a setup like this, we can distribute that c. So this would equal c times a of m plus c times a of m plus 1 plus c times a of m plus 2 all the way up to c times a of n. Right? We've distributed the c. Similarly, I can pull that constant C inside of the summation, as long as it's a constant. Just like we can do in calculus. Right. And this is called the generalized distributive law. Because that's what we're doing. We're distributing our constant C into the sum. 
So these are the two properties of summations that we're going to be using in this class. And now let's take a look at the properties of products. So similar to how we had this sum of summations in, pro in property one here, we're going to have a product of products. So if I take a product of k equals m to n, and I multiply it by another product, as long as the bounds are the same, we can just suck it all into one product. Right? That should be pretty straightforward. Let's take a look at the second property. Again, recall our second property here for summations. Let's see if that works here. So if I have a constant times a product, can I just pull that constant in? Well, let's try it with an expanded form. So if I have C times a of m times a of m plus 1 times a of m plus 2 times all the way up to a of n. Can I distribute that c in? No. In, in this case, whether or not I have these parentheses, if everything inside is multiplied, then this, there's still only one C. This is not the same as C times A of M times C times A of M plus 1 and so on. Right? That doesn't work. And similarly, this property doesn't work. This is not uh, correct. Is not a property. So I listed it only to demonstrate why it doesn't work, but in fact we're just going to have this one property of products that we can work with. So now I'd like to do an example where we use these three different properties. Right, We have the two properties of summations and the property of products to simplify a complex summation problem. So notice we have two summations here, right? And I wanna add them together. We've got the same lower bound, but the upper bounds are different. So what I'm going to do is before we can add them, we need to pull off the last term on this first summation, which will make the summations then the same. So I'm going to rewrite this first summation. I'm going to say What's another way of writing this, pulling the final term off? Well, you can ex always expand this if helpful. So expanding this would give us 1 plus 1 plus 2 plus 1, right? I'm just sub substituting um, the values in for k. 
plus 3 plus 1, all the way up to n plus 1 plus n plus 1 plus 1, right? Which is our upper bound. So if I wanted to pull this last term off, that means I need to summarize these terms. This is going to be k equals 1 to n of k plus 1 plus this last term, which is going to be n plus 2. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite this problem using these uh, these components that we just found. In fact, I'm going to actually rewrite the whole statement right here. So, except I'm going to swap the order of them. So I'm just going to rearrange these. You'll see why here in a moment. So we're going to have n plus 2 plus the sum of k equals 1 to n of k plus 1. Right. That's all of that. This is all from this first term. And then I'm also going to add the second term in. Okay, and we're going to say that top, uh, our original problem is going to equal this whole thing. Now, I cannot yet use my property 1 on these yet. Why not? Well, because property 1, if we go back and look at it, uh, doesn't say anything about having a constant in front. It just says if we have two sums, we can combine them as long as the values are the same. So we're going to first have to use the second property to suck that 2, that constant of 2 right here, into the sum. So I'm going to rewrite this as n plus 2 plus the sum. So this was by... Pulling the last term from the first equation, from first sum. And now I'm going to rewrite this. And I'm going to suck that constant 2 inside my summation. which is property 2. Okay. Now, we notice that these two sums have the same bounds. So I can combine them into a single summation. So this is using property 2. Or excuse me, property 1.
And now all I have to do is do a little bit of algebra on this part to simplify it, and we'll be done. So I'm going to rewrite this on the next page. and simplify. This is k plus 1 plus 2k minus 2. So we can finally write this as 3k minus 1. Okay, so we've simplified this sum of sums into a single simpler sum. 